Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining today's webinar. I'm Laura Malojevic. I am the Director of Marketing and Business Development at Simplify Solutions. Um, today, we're excited to have our partner of Planning, Analytics, and Consolidations, Jared Bilek, um, discussing and demoing consolidations and reporting with Group Reporting and SAP Analytics Cloud. So once the webinar concludes, a short survey is gonna appear. Um, if you guys could please fill that out, we'd really appreciate it. And of course, as always, feel free to reach out to Jared or myself after the webinar with any questions. So now I will hand it over to Jared so he can get started. Hello everyone, thanks for joining. I'm glad to see we have a lot of people interested um, in this group reporting session. Uh, my name is Jared Bilek, as Lauren said, so I'm a, a client partner with Simplify Solutions. Um, my experience, and we'll kind of get to it a couple slides down the road, but um, you know, started off as a BWB and BPC consultant, um, so very familiar with kind of planning and consolidations, both in BPC, a little bit of ECCS, and and now group reporting. So, yeah, excited to have you all here. Um, you know, this is going to be for the most part, kind of an introduction um, to group reporting, kind of showing you the screens and how it looks in the system. Uh, perhaps many of you have seen um, a lot of slides and a lot of, um, you know, kind of documents. Um, but what we're hearing from a lot of our, our clients and, and potential customers is that, you know, a lot of people haven't really seen the system, um, you know, kind of live. So, you know, our goal for this presentation is both to be, you know, somewhat informative um, or very informative um, from kind of a high level, but then also be able to kind of show you what the system looks like um, so that you're familiar with it. Uh, we will, you know, likely be having um, follow-up content um, in addition to this that will go a little bit deeper into, you know, specific topics such as um, you know, specifically reporting or specifically uh, intercompany eliminations or matching and reconciliation or currency translation, um, you know, consolidation of investments, different methods, stuff like that. So, you know, we're hoping that this lays a good foundation um, for everyone to, uh, you know, really get excited and, and interested and learn more about group reporting. So, I'm going to turn my camera off and start sharing my screen. I think you should be able to see my screen now, right? Okay. Yep, we can see it. Okay, great. Okay, so again, like you said, what we're gonna cover, we're gonna talk a little bit about Simplify, and for those of you who are regular attendees of our webinars and our YouTube videos, um, you know, bear with us as we kind of explain, um, you know, what who we are and, and what we do to some of the newcomers. Then we're gonna talk about um, kind of the approach of group reporting, uh, the group reporting roadmap, kind of what the future looks like, some enhancements um, in the group reporting components. And then we're gonna go uh, into the system. And I'm gonna walk you through, um, you know, some some key screens, how to kind of maintain the master data, how to maintain, um, kind of run through a consolidation process, both, you know, loading data as well as going through the, the consolidation and closing a period. So without further ado, so Simplify, um, who are we? We um, are SAP consultants and, and solution architects that um, you know, work for the office of the CFO and CIO. We specialize in SAP Analytics Cloud, Group Reporting, BW, BPC. Um, you know, we have a lot of very experienced consultants, um, you know, that have been with SAP for, for over 10 years. Um, you know, watching these products grow, uh, deep experience in both, um, you know, the functional and the technical side is, and we, um, you know, have been involved with SAP uh, specifically for SAP Analytics Cloud, um, you know, from the very early um, ages of, of Analytics Cloud before it was, you know, even released to customers. So, 
you know, very proud of that, very proud of kind of our knowledge and the solutions that we've delivered in that tool. Um, you know, also been involved with group reporting. Um, you know, I personally uh, was involved in one of the first uh, group reporting uh, successful projects on uh, group reporting 1809. So, you know, a lot of deep experience, um, both technically and functionally. Uh, wouldn't be, um, you know, without, without mentioning that, uh, you know, we have to kind of emphasize our, our skills in SAP Analytics Cloud, you know, we have, um, you know, placed first and second, we, we have the first and second um, placements for the SAP Hackathon for um, SAP Analytics Cloud. So we're also very proud of that. So, you know, our primary goal is 100% referenceable clients, um, you know, regardless of the size of the project or the type of project. Um, our goal is customer satisfaction. We are um, primarily focused on making sure that um, the project is successful on time, on budget, um, and that the customer is able to walk away and, and support it themselves. Um, you know, here are some of our you know primary uh, and kind of marquee clients: Pfizer, TDS, Step In, Growmark. Um, you know. Uh, Wolverine and, and McNess as well. Some very, um, you know, very great projects that we're very proud of. Um, so just wanted to mention that. When it comes to, uh, you know, what differentiates Simplify from a lot of SIs is that we we spend a lot of, of time and we make a considerable investment um, and we have people fully dedicated um, to building out prepackaged solutions. Uh, these prepackaged solutions can be sold as is, or they can be great accelerators um, that, that drastically reduce um, the cost of implementation. I think that's why you'll see, you know, when we're compared to other implementation partners, um, our times are, are, you know, time to value is often much faster and, and our prices are, are very competitive. And a big reason for that is that we've been able to kind of harness our experience, turn them into prepackaged solutions um, across a wide array of, of business functions. So, you know, sales, revenue, um, expense planning, HR planning, capital planning. Um, you know, the, this has been a very successful initiative for us, um, and we see a lot of a lot of interest in um, you know multiple uh, prepackaged solutions. Some of our consolidation specific uh, use cases. Um, now these, uh, some only ones on group reporting, but some of them are, are using SAC. So we have our Wolverine use case, uh, Stepin, um, and Plastipack, which is a group reporting um, project that we kicked off last month. I'm very excited about it. Uh, this project was awarded to us based on our um, successful implementation of SAP Analytics Cloud and the work we were doing there and our, our knowledge of the business and the consolidation process. Um, they're on BPC and they uh, you know, have been going through an S4 upgrade and you know, we made the recommendation to, to move to group reporting um, because you know, we think group reporting is an excellent tool and it's an excellent fit for them. So very excited about, about that project. A little bit about myself. Um, again, I've been, you know, in the SAP space for over 15 years. Um, you know, worked on a variety of clients, a variety of solutions, a variety of industries. Um, you know, some of my, my consolidation solutions, you know, range from you know, kind of under $1 billion customers to, um, you know, over $10 billion customers. So, you know, a wide array of, of clients and complexities, um, lots of different, you know, flavors of, of consolidation. Um, so yeah, happy to, you know, be on this, this webinar, please feel free to reach out to me um, or John or anyone at Simplify. Um, you know, we, we'd be happy to kind of, you know, go through our experience and, and 
talk you through, um, you know, kind of what what issues you're facing. So when we talk about group reporting, um, the big the big goal of group reporting is to simplify and accelerate the close process. So one way that they're able to do this is through the concept of continuous accounting. So because we have access to the Universal Journal um, and data from, from non-SAP companies uh, available through Flexible Upload, all the data is right there available for us um, to run consolidations and, and rerun them, make adjustments, make journal entries, um, change rates, uh, and, and rerun consolidations. It's very quick compared to um, BPC and what we've seen with Hyperion. Um, a big reason that, you know, the, the main reason it's so quick is because you don't have the, um, the data staging. And, and the ETL activities that you have taking the data out of your transactional you know, ECCS4 system, um, putting it through, you know, either putting it into flat files, mapping it, and uploading it to uh, Hyperion, or putting it through BW into BPC. So because we have direct access to the Universal Journal, uh, we eliminate that step completely. And we're going to go through some additional um, kind of additional benefits and capabilities because that data is right there um, available in the in the transactional system. So this is kind of a an overview of of what it looks like, how kind of the data architecture diagram, and you know how data can come into both S for HANA as well as group reporting and um, and then be reported on either in SAP Analytics Cloud or Analysis for Office or directly in group reporting itself. And we're gonna go into um, kind of at, at the end of this webinar, we're gonna go into um, you know, some of the reporting options and when you may choose to, to report directly out of group reporting, when you may choose to go use SAP Analytics Cloud and, and when you choose to use Analysis for Office. So the key parts of the group reporting process, data collection, um, whether that's you know the, the universal journal or flexible upload in, into S4 HANA, um, the data preparation, which includes you know everything from validating the data, doing the currency translations, making um, journal entries, doing the intercompany matching and postings. Um, and then moving into the consolidation tasks, running your eliminations, running your consolidation of investments. Um, you know, you're able to run consolidations on, on multiple versions and we'll get into that. Um, you know, we'll also get into kind of the, the different uh, releases of group reporting and, and also how, you know, if you're not aware, there's both an on-premise and a cloud version available for group reporting. Um, what I'll be showing you today is group report, um, is the cloud version of group reporting, um, the 2005 release. So it's a fairly new release. Um, and, you know, it, depending on whether you are on group reporting or not on group reporting yet, if you're going to group reporting, you will likely be going to a release that is right around what I'm showing you. So it, it will be relevant. If you are on uh, 1809, 1909, um, you would have to wait until uh, your S4 system was upgraded um, to be able to see you know, some of these features. So again, going through the process, you know, we can kind of see when we start in the upper left-hand corner with prepare, go down to collect around consolidate on that counterclockwise motion. We can see all the activities, um, you know, the closed activities that we go through. Um, we'll see in the system that these activities are, are created as tasks, which make it very easy to both run and monitor 
um, your consolidation process. So all these different lines that you see here, um, for the most part, are individual tasks. You know, when we talk about um, reporting, you'll be opening up reports, but everything from balance carry forward um, to the valid to the release of the universal journals, the validation, um, calculating net income, all of those are, are individual tasks that I'll show you today. So kind of a look of you know where we are right now with group reporting and the product roadmap. I would highly suggest um, if you haven't seen this roadmap or if you're not familiar with SAP roadmaps, um, you can just Google group reporting product roadmap um, and it'll take you to the roadmap explorer and, and you'll you can kind of do some searching and get the group reporting roadmap. Um, we have similar ones for SAP Analytics Cloud, BPC, what have you. Um, but it really gives you an idea of kind of the future enhancements that are coming down the road. Um, you know, everything from, you know, and this can be for, you know, the cloud version or the on-premise version. Um, you know, there, there is a difference in how they're released. If you're not familiar, um, the cloud edition typically has, you know, four releases per year, uh, quarterly releases, and then the on-premise version has, um, annual releases along with the, the, you know, S4, um, that follow the S4 release schedule. So when S4 is released, that's when all the new features will, will go into the on-premise group reporting version. And then that, um, on-premise release, you know, catches up all the cloud capabilities that were released, um, you know, in the quarterly releases prior to that annual release. So definitely recommend, you know, looking at the product roadmap. What we see a lot of is just kind of more integration, both with SAC, um, future integration with advanced financial close, um, kind of more capabilities in terms of, of data mapping and data acquisition, um, you know, and, and some business localization content um, as well. You know, one great thing of, about group reporting is that you know if you activate the best practices content in some of those packages um, it really goes a long way in terms of you know creating um, kind of a great structure great platform for you to activate different components and when we go through it i'll kind of show you you know that'll make a little bit more sense but you know, in going through the best practices, kind of everything in, in all the master data components that are activated, um, you know, there are upload templates that you can download um, so that you can just, you know, mass upload, whether it's consolidation unit master data, FS item mapping, um, all that's available to you. So just real quick here, just a couple screens. Um, if you've seen group reporting, you've likely seen the data monitor and consolidation monitor. These are kind of your two big screens that you see and that you're continuously working with um, that aren't directly related to configuration. These are more when you're actually running your consolidation. Um, if you're not familiar with Fiori, uh, it, it's pretty much everywhere now though, but group reporting, in the early days, we ran a lot of transactions. So consolidation mon monitor, you know, CX20, um, data monitor, you know, we would just go into, you know, basically uh, open up a transaction um, and just run it directly. Now, um, you know, everything's available in Fiori. I highly recommend, um, you know, just getting accustomed to the Fiori interface. Um, you know, it's customizable. Um, and I can also kind of show you how, you know, the different um, different roles can be set up with, you know, different accesses to different groups of tasks as well. Okay, so now I'm going to um, go into the system here. So as we see here, this is, you know, exactly what I was showing you before. This is our um basically our fiori homes page uh we have both consolidation you know, group reporting tiles as well as um s4 tiles uh 
as well as just kind of system maintenance styles, everything from um, maintaining uh, employees um, to, you know, kind of authorizations and group reporting tasks and journal entries, you know, just about everything you can imagine um, is here available to you. So um, just wanted to kind of give you a look at what this, um, what the Fury Tau looks like. A little bit, you know, when we talk about group reporting, one key uh, thing to know is that kind of what you're going to see different from from BPC and and group reporting um, are, you know, entities are now consolidation units. Um, you know, basically the same company codes, consolidation units, uh, and they roll up to consolidation groups. Uh, another big change is uh, a term called FS item. So FS items, which is financial statement item, it's a grouping of GL accounts. And so, and they can be GL accounts and, and sub items like transaction um, types as well. Um, but basically, you know, we, all group reporting acts on um, this concept called, called FS item. And I can, I do have a, In here that you know so as we're talking about fs items um you know we look at it it's basically a, a grouping of gl accounts we're able to um, attach things like selection attributes which if you're familiar with bpc you know the, these would be like groupings where you know we could run um, groupings of accounts that would, you know, be involved in, in balance carry forwards and currency translations and intercompany eliminations. So we have all that capability um, to an even more granular level with group reporting than we did with BPC. Um, so we do have these selection attributes, target attributes, um, a lot of flexibility in how we can, um, you know, arrange these FS items. And, you know, this is, um, you know, time dependent. So you can have different mappings for GL accounts and, and FS items as you go through time. Um, that can change and you can look at, at different mappings, you know, as you're running different uh, periods for consolidations. Um, they would, you know, take into account the, the mapping that is active at that time. So we're gonna go back into the screen here. So if we were to look at, um, you know, a lot of your consolidation process is just going to start with setting your global parameters. So that's kind of why it's the top left, um, the top left tile is that everything that you do is, you know, this kind of sets, you know, if you think of BPC and kind of setting your, um, you know, like your, your, uh, your variables for, you know, what entity, everything that you're running, um, your current view, this is like that. So you would, you know, you're setting your parameters and this is what you're going to run when you open up tiles. It's basically going to take, you know, your cons group or cons unit, um, the version that you're running, your fiscal year period, um, and your chart of accounts into account. So that's kind of how you're going to open up your screens. So it's very convenient um, and, and something that you just, the more that you're working with this, you kind of always get in the habit of just, you know, checking this, um, you know, when you kind of enter group reporting and, and creating this. So here we're looking at, um, you know, we can look at how we define consolidation units. And, So again, consolidation units are, are your legal entities. Um, we can see that, you know, based on my global parameters, it's, it's going to bring up all the entities that um, are available at that time. Um, so we can see here that I've set up, um, you know, multiple consolidation units. 
I'll show you uh, in a different screen how those consolidation units roll up to consolidation groups. If we were to look at Sorry. If we were to take a look at um, a consolidation unit, we have uh, various things that we can control here. So we can say, um, basically, are we, you know, for a group currency, are we bringing that from the transaction system? Um, are we bringing local currency from the transaction system? Um, are we even bringing the data from the universal journal or do we have kind of no integration which means we're using a flexible upload um, for those of you who you know might have worked on previous versions of group reporting one um, a a limitation of previous versions of group reporting were that you could not um, have a company code that was uh, connected to the universal journal as well as um, available for flexible upload. But now, um, at least in this version, uh, you are able to you know, both bring in data from the Universal Journal as well as um, load it through a flexible upload. So we can also do other things like maintain the tax rate, um, currency translation method. Let's go back, um, we'll look at different company code that has those uh, has those set up and so we can see here um, you know where we have our, our standard currency translation method now I'll just open that up so you can kind of see what all is available there so if we're looking at this um, you know everything from there's a basically a guide that kind of goes in and explains what what all these are but um you know i think the primarily what you're going to use are are the standard or you know for group reporting you're going to use the s4 accounting um group reporting so what that means and, and we get this question quite a bit is um as you're posting entries in s4 um, it's going to post it in transaction currency, local currency, um, or what people call functional currency sometimes, and group reporting, uh, sorry, group currency. And so group reporting gives you the option of being able to um, either run that currency translation in group reporting with different rates, or you can bring the already um, converted group reporting or group currency value directly from S4. So that's a nice feature there. Um, we can set the tax rate. We can set, um, you know, here we don't have to worry about the fiscal uh, variant because it's just going to take what gets loaded. Um, but let's look at the consolidation groups and how these are, um, tied to different consolidation groups. Group view. And so we can see here, if I were to change, um, you know, this is my CGR 22. So you can have multiple consolidation groups. Um, if I were to change this to my other consolidation group, we'd see that I only have two consolidation units. So changing this back. We can see that, um, you know, we're able to kind of designate what the start of that uh, assignment of that consolidation unit to that consolidation group is, the end of that assignment. Um, so typically, you know, if, if you, didn't have a, a planned divestiture um, in the works. You know, this would just be end of time. And then you can set up your period of first consolidation, year of first consolidation, and then if you had a divestiture set up, and then your consolidation uh, method here. So, you know, we can see, you know, if we're to open this up, 
and edit it. We can see all the different um, consolidation methods that are available. So this, um, you know, like BPC in that, you know, we have a uh, different different uh, consolidation methods available to us. Um, so we're able to, uh, that this is where we would manage that. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of there. Okay, and now we're gonna get to um, the data monitor and the consolidation monitor. Well, just real quick. Um, so here's the currency exchange rate. So here's where you can set up um, all of your uh, currency exchange rates. So if I were to say, you know, valid from, oh, basically, I might be able to just leave this open and run it, print everything. Um, so here we can see, you know, we have average close. If we look down here, there's even, um, a rate this include um, INC2, which you know we could use if, if a company was coming um, was acquired uh, kind of mid year, um, we can use that rate um, separately. So again, we have our our valid from you know able to set the rates for average closing. You know a couple others. This is also where we can um, we can set up you know, different versions that, that have a uh, constant currency as well. So, you know, versions is a new concept in, in group reporting. So if you're on an earlier version of group reporting, or if you've seen it, you, you've probably heard of, um, you know, consolidation ledger. Um, the ledger has gone away and it's really, you know, now it's combined chart of accounts with, with versions. So, what this gives us, and I'm just going to open that up real quick here. And so this tile I can never find, so I always have to type it in here, but some of your um, group reporting kind of basic configurations, like an S-Pro, if you're familiar with, with that transaction, um, this is where you do some of your basic um, group reporting configurations. So you're saying, and, and I'll walk you through it real, real quickly here, but here you can say what master data fields are available. Um, Not sure why this is. this is usually a pretty quick uh this doesn't go through here well uh there we go okay so here we can kind of, uh, you know, maintain exchange rate types. Um, you know, a lot of what we are really going to look at is um, defining our version. So if we were to look um, here, this is in data processing where we um, kind of maintain consolidation methods um, and currency translation methods. Uh, we want to go one step back um, to here where we're going to um, select basic settings. And here we can see kind of where we define our consolidation ledgers, define our versions, our reference versions. So as we're, oh, this guy, 
Okay. You can see kind of the screen here, and I think it got, um, with me sharing my screen, that got buffered a little bit. But, um, you know, it's kind of the same thing here where, you know, you're defining your versions, um, and you can, you know, with different versions, you can have and you can consolidate in multiple planning currencies. Um, I don't know how I ended up in cash operations, but. Um, There we go. Hopefully, I caught it now. But here we can maintain, you know, your actuals at budget rates. Um, you can you can do consolidations. Um, you know, you could do one consolidation and have a group that does it in euro. Same consolidation units rolled up a little bit differently. You could consolidate that in USD. So this version allows you to consolidate in multiple group currencies. So this is a big, um, you know, a big development that's available in the, in the newer releases of, of group reporting. So I just wanted to show that to you real quick. Now we're gonna go um, into the data monitor and walk you through that process real quick and then we'll get into reporting. So as we can see here, um, you know, as I'm looking at the data monitor, you can run these tasks. Uh, now I've run through these already. Um, you can, you know, unlock them if you select at the group level. You can basically unblock. So after you run through tasks and they're successful, um, you can then lock them. And then once they're all locked and you don't have any errors, you run through your validations um these statuses will turn green so you can see here that you have a hierarchy the cgr22 is my consolidation group the units underneath are my my cons units um we can see our tasks here um balance carry forward release universal journal um in my other consolidation group i, I have one that's tied to the universal journal one that's um done through flexible upload these are all flexible uploads um, and then here you have the data uh, collection, which you know would be available for your flexible upload and then calculate net income. I'm just gonna go ahead and run this and kind of just show you what, what running it would look like. So here you can see you can run um, test runs, which kind of go through and, and you know would show you if you had any errors, um, or you can just run this you know, if you've already run test run or you don't expect any errors. So I'm able to, you know, kind of drill down in down to the FS item level, um, you know, for these different consolidation units um, and just see this. So we can see that there was no update. Um, you know, these are these are all the you know existing data that's been there. So now that I ran it, what's nice is that you can run this, you know, an individual consolidation unit level, or you can run it, um, you know, all the tasks for, for all the consolidation units. And then you can run, um, you know, all the different validations as well. So if I just come in here, Click it should uh... there we go. So if you just click on the icon, right click on the icon, then, then select update, um, then you can run, it's gonna open a new screen. Um, it's gonna run these validation um, rules. So you can set up these validation rules and just to look at these, um, you can drill into them and kind of show uh, you know, what, they, what they mean. So you know, if we were to say, 
um, you know, CTA flow 980 must balance. So as we open this up, we can see what the formula is. We can set our tolerance. We can set that tolerance for a dollar value or for a percentage. Um, we can have this be a hard stop or just a warning, uh, depending on that. So a lot of flexibility, um, you know, when it comes to validations. And these validations, um, you know, are present, you know, all throughout kind of both the data the data monitor um, process as well as the consolidation process. So as we're looking here, um, I can run currency translation as well. So as I unlock, uh, as I unlock the tasks, um, everything that's to the right of that task basically has to be rerun um, and then relocked again. So we can see. You know, as I run currency translation, it's going to, you know, have the group currency amounts. Uh, if I were to you know, select an individual consolidation unit, um, I can also see, you know, in the, um, I can also see what's posted as part of the currency translation adjustment. So one key thing to note is this um, sub item here. It's a lot like flow of BPC. So, you know, all the tasks that you're running are stored against these sub items, um, which allows you to kind of look in and really analyze and, um, you know, isolate your data as it's being written, you know, in these postings, as well as, um, you know, in reporting. So I'm just going to go ahead and run to the consolidation monitor, and then we'll get to uh, the reporting real quick. You can see that there's a lot to cover. Um, you know, we're really just scratching the surface here. So as we look here, we can see that um, you know at the consolidation group. So once I lock down. Um, you know, my, my, my data monitoring um, and all my data tasks, then you come to your consolidation monitor, and then you're able to run, um, you know, you're able to run the various tasks for like, I, you know, IC elimination, um, your consolidation of investments, And so we can see here, you know, as I run my elimination, um, it's running, you know, between my my cons unit and my partner unit, and then it's reclassing it. But it's also, um, you know, creating that that posting, um, and it's flagging it, you know, with the sub item of, you know, the the elimination um, the elimination posting here. So. You know, very, you know, once this is set up, it's a it's a well-oiled machine, but it's also, you know, pretty easy to set up, pretty flexible. You can see that there is no coding here. You know, this is just all configuration, um, which is great. That means, you know, especially if you are familiar with the business rules of BPC, very similar, but a lot more powerful. Um, you know, there's a lot of different rules that we can run here. You know, so as we go through, um, so I'll just bring up that consolidation monitor again real quick. You know, so as we're running through these, again, you're just going to kind of run through, and these are milestones. So basically, you can run through, you know, these individual tasks, and you can run through successive tasks and then stop at a milestone. These milestones, you know, usually involve some sort of manual entry. Um, you can, you're able to run these different elimination tasks, and then um, you're also able to kind of enter in your journal entries, topside adjustments um, through here. So if we were to look at you know an example of a journal entry, this is a a form that I was able to download from SAP um, 
able to make kind of my intercompany um, transaction postings, my my balance sheet postings, um, put in my my partner uh, company code here, and this is the format. Like I don't have to worry about creating a format. Um, you know, I'm able to download this from the system, make my adjustments, uh, and then just upload it using the tile. So very easy. Um, you know, as far as journal entries, you can, you know, upload. Uh, there is a screen to do them kind of one at a time as well. Um, but this is very handy, especially if you are, you know, doing more than one, which most of the time you are. So as we run through this, we'll show you real quick the reporting that's available um, in group reporting. So this would be more for ad hoc reporting, um, kind of just being able to see trial balances, but also able to see different hierarchies. It's, uh, you know, it's much more powerful than just being able to see trial balances. We're able to see, you know, switch in and out. Um, you know, it's a lot like a pivot table. We can switch in and out group currency, uh, add local currency, we can filter it. Um, we can also look at and store different, um, both different filters as well as different views. So as we see here, you know, I have my consolidation, my elimination unit, my consolidation unit, FS items, um, partner units, and values here and then my fiscal year and period. If I were to bring in this navigation panel, we'll see all the characteristics that are available to bring in um, for this reporting. So say that I just wanted to look at um, FS item, consolidated FS item. I can simply come here and remove everything but FS item. And now I can right click on FS item and I'm able to choose a hierarchy, um, an FS item hierarchy that can be maintained. If I just click, uh, oh. So I can choose balance sheet hierarchy, p &L hierarchy. Um, you know, there's also, a, real quick, I'll show you kind of the statement of cash flows report that we can run with the um, data analysis with reporting rules. So this is referred to as group data analysis. Again, just a tile that's available. Um, you know, and here we can see, you know, some flexible reporting. Um, you know, along a balance sheet hierarchy. I can also bring in different measures. So we can see here that this is the amount in group currency. I can, if I just select this, I can bring in local currency. And so we can see here, um, yeah, there's nothing in local currency uh, for this particular combination, but, um, you know, we can bring in, again, that reporting capability and flexibility is there. What's also nice is if I were to, um, I can save this view as a balance sheet view. I can, um, you know, navigate and filter this how I see fit, and then basically just come in here and save as, and then just name it, or I can change this view as is. Okay, so that's some of the, um, you know, and, and for balance sheet or PL item, you would just be here. So we'll go back to uh, real quick and just show you the statement of cash flows, which are group data analysis, but with reporting rules.
And so again, as we're looking here, we can see that, um, you know, similar look and feel, um, but different report in that uh, I have kind of my, you can set up, um, you know, your statement, your reporting rules, which kind of, you know, create how these statement of cash flow items, um, you know, how they're calculated. And then you basically have a, you know, kind of, on the fly ad hoc statement of cash flow report available to you, but still with the flexibility, you know, of moving the rows and columns around and and, and the filters. So similar, um, but pretty pretty capable and out of the box, um, you know, statement of cash flow report. So, you know, in terms of kind of getting data very quickly, I think this is. Um, this is very handy to have this tool. This isn't something that we typically, um, you know, would see in in ECCS kind of prior or or S four type reporting. Something that's this flexible, we'd usually have to put it into a reporting system. Um, now, if we want kind of formatted and um, you know highly formatted reports, as well as um, you know, kind of the flex, you know, additional flexibility, kind of Excel calculations and um, have logos, stuff like that. Um, that's where we use uh, SAC. So I'm just going to bring up SAC real quick. And so for those of you who aren't familiar with SAC, um, you know, this is, uh, you know, basically it's a planning system, but, you know, we have um, for for clients that don't require group reporting or aren't eligible for group reporting, you know, we've built in a lot of the same functionality and calculations uh, for consolidations. Um, group reporting does require that you're on S4, that you're at least on release 1809. Um, you know, so unless your um, you know transaction system or, or you buy it separately, but you know those those are the system requirements. Um, so we have built out a lot of uh, corporate consolidations. What's nice about kind of what we've built here um, is that you know a lot of these reports we can we can still use. Uh, by importing data from group reporting, either through a replicated connection um, or through uh, a live data connection. So we have both um, both available to us. You know, the advantage of a live connection is that you, know, you don't have to load data, um, don't have to replicate that data, or you know, the mapping is pretty much one to one. But um, you know, if you have an import connection, then we're able to um, kind of do a little bit more with it. Um, you know, you can kind of throw in additional KPIs that that weren't in, um, you know, maybe not captured in group reporting or outside data that's not entered in group reporting. So as we're looking here and looking at some of the reporting capabilities, um, you know, again, we have our balance sheet, income statement, cash flow. Um, you know, this is where a little bit more um, highly formatted, we can add logos, we can add, um, you know, we can kind of maneuver the, the time periods a little bit more easily. Um, some of the, um, you know, the, the little things like the, the number formatting, the lines, if we have a line, double line, the thickness of the lines, um all that and kind of the hierarchy presentation as well so you know if we were to look in here just look at the designer
we can see that you know there's nothing um, you know nothing that's really kind of very complicated with this. It's just kind of a selection of members, um, some filters, you know, with this some um, kind of header text boxes, and then if we're to look at you know the formatting, we have a lot of formatting capabilities here in terms of you know both the table itself, but also um, at the cell level. Um, in turn, you know, whether it's, you know, the, the cell, you know, the border shaping fill, um, you know, bold size, what have you, um, but also table properties as well. So, you know, this is where we're able to, um, you know, in part because of the tool and in part because of our experience with the tool, um, you know, we're able to uh, build a lot of capabilities um, into SAC to report off of, you know, both group reporting and, and um, you know, other systems as well. So the last thing I want to show you um, is basically what kind of analysis for office would look like. So analysis for office, um, not quite as modern. Um, many of you may have used analysis for office, in, you know, connecting it with BW or BBC. Um, you know, kind of a, a tool that's been around a while. What's nice about it is that you get even more flexibility with your formatting um, and your structures, all that. You're able to put in, um, you know, specific formulas both to get and to retrieve if you're writing data back. Um, you know, they have logos, have, uh, you know, again, just a, another level of formatting that's even beyond SAC. We recommend SAC just because, you know, that is, um, you know, highly capable and always getting better with every release. You also get a lot more visualization capabilities. So, but I just wanted to show you this as, um, you know, another alternative because a lot of kind of board reports, what have you, um, you know, are in kind of the, that Excel template. So I wanted to show you that. Um, we're up on time right now. Uh, I think we will, um, you know, gather your your questions. I want to thank you very much. Um, you know, again, we're going to have some some deeper dive sessions. If you saw something that you have additional questions on, um, please email me. Uh, you know, or email uh, Lauren, who set up this event. Um, connect us. I can. You know, I think I, um, don't think I have my email on here, which is an oversight, but um, we will, uh, we'll definitely, um, you know, reach out to each one of you that have connected, uh, give you our contact information. If you have um, additional questions or if you posted questions to the site, um, we'll get back to that. Um, we'll get back to you on those. And then um, we'll also keep you informed of, you know, upcoming events, uh, kind of deeper dives into group reporting. So thank you very much. Um, Lauren, um, I guess, did you want to say anything? Okay, um, well then I will just say goodbye uh, on behalf of all of us from Simplified. Thank you very much for staying, um, you know, throughout the presentation. Hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to reach out with any questions and uh, we'll talk again soon. All right, thank you.